So the other night I sat down and I started watching the Witchboard series. So I'm going to be covering all three of these. I've already watched one, two, and half of three. So I'll be getting to all three of these. I'll probably drop them all about the same time. So you'll already know I've watched all three because you'll see all three reviews up. So we got Witchboard here. I tried to watch this VHS copy that I have and it was so horrendous that I couldn't. And I had to go and look and it is currently on shutter and it's a fantastic hd copy so highly recommend it because this movie is actually pretty damn good and i also really liked the sequel and i'm quite enjoying the third one solid franchise solid franchise supposedly there's a new one in the works that's supposed to be like witchboard 3d uh we'll see if that ever comes to fruition but as of right now uh, unless three, I have seen all these before. My memory of them was very rocky. I was like, um, I think I remember some things. And, uh, but I remember liking them. And I have to say, as I said, when I went back and I rewatched this one, I was like, this is damn good. This is a good movie. I like this a lot. I like the characters. I, you know, I like what's going on in here. Okay. So we got the skeptic at the party who is it? Jim, our main guy. Uh, or no, I'm sorry, Brandon is the skeptic, but then it is Jim who's the skeptic against Brandon because Brandon brings up the Ouija. Now, I'm going to say Ouija throughout this and throughout the next two because in this entire franchise, they call it a Ouija and Brandon explains that the, the word Ouija comes from the French word weed. And then uh, the German word jaw, or yeah, jaw, or something like that. So it's Ouija. They explain it in the fucking franchise, like I think almost every film. And as I said, not one person calls it a Ouija. Uh, so I'm not trying to be hoity toity here. <laughs> this is just how it's pronounced in this franchise. So I'm sticking with it. So, anyways. So we've got the uh, exchange here between Jim and Linda. Linda's the girlfriend in this. And these are our three, three main characters, Jim, Brandon, and Linda. And Linda tells her boyfriend, Jim, I love you. And to which he replies, I know. Sound like anyone familiar? I think uh, this guy's been watching a little too much Empire Strikes Back. Um, and... Uh, Brandon tells everyone that at the party that you have to be totally sober in order to do this and that you have to make full contact with the body. So you want to put the Ouija on your knees. And uh, of course, this is mostly a stint to just get Linda close to him because Brandon and Jim used to be best buds. But then Brandon thinks that Jim stole Linda from him. So there's been this huge you know, fight between them ever since. Uh, but Linda's still, you know, people still bringing Brandon around and they are at each other's throats the entire time. And Brandon's kind of the uppity, snobby prick. And Jim is the everyday man who, you know, likes to talk shit and, and is, you know, not, you know, he's, he's not having the best of luck financially and he's taking these jobs like he was in medical school and the guy that he works with is like what the fuck are you doing here man we're going on a construction site um but then we get uh jim is talking shit to david the ghost which of course sets david into a rage of course we end up finding out that this really isn't david uh we'll get to that so the um we get a scene here uh, where Jim's buddy down at the construction site throws his hammer, which has like a hatchet on the back end of it, right next to his face into a wood beam. This reminds me a lot of Friday the 13th when, when uh, you know, you get the arrow right next to the chick's face and she's like, what the hell? You know, it, like what? I would react way more aggressively than that, dude. Like you could have killed me. Like, that's like attempted murder. <laughs> when it's that close, I don't care how talented you are. You do not throw a fucking knife or 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 a, a hatchet or a, a bow and arrow. You're not that good, okay? No one's that competent. You can fuck up. You can miss. Everybody's fallible. So, no. Don't do that. Um, 
And the board in this looks like a store-bought Ouija. I would think they pull out something way nicer. I mean, shit, the one in Paranormal Activity looks nicer than this. And that was like a, you know, a budget of like $2. $2. So I, I'm surprised, but I think they were just trying to sell the Ouija, the Ouija board that we all know from the stores because that's exactly what it looks like. Um, and David doesn't, David doesn't want to be Linda and Jim's kid. Um, yeah, that that's interesting. Um, I really like the back and forth with Jim and Brandon here. I think that's what really makes this film. And I actually was pretty upset when Brandon ends up dying. I was like, oh, no, I really liked him at this point. So the grudge started with Linda, and then they kind of make up, and they got some really funny back-and-forth banter, and I was into it. Um, and um, when Linda is told by David where her ring is, she takes off the catch in the, in the plumbing underneath her sink, and she's... <laughs> this is not how you look for something in a catch. Like, you take off both sides... You pull it down and then you flip it upside down. She's going and she's like digging it around in it with like a toothbrush and all that. What the fuck are you doing? What are you doing? It comes off of both sides so you can turn it upside down and shake it out. Which she was, that was so stupid. That was so stupid. But, um, you know, I guess she's not the most savvy plumber around. Um, the detective in this, who's really weird, uh, he refers to Siegfried and Roy as Sigmund and Roy. I don't know if that was a mess up or it was supposed to show his incompetence. Um, I, I'm honestly not sure. I don't know if the people on the, in, the, in the movie knew that they're Siegfried and Roy, <laughs> but calls them Sigmund and Roy. And I laughed out loud when I heard it. I was like, who? Who the hell is that? Um, and the psychic in this, oh my God. TTFN. Uh, she's Carrie from Roadhouse. Um, but she's so fucking annoying, but kind of hilarious. And her whole like psychic humor stuff. <laughs> it was making me laugh, but in a, oh my God, she's so annoying kind of way. Uh, the bad guy in this is the bad guy from Witch Trap, which I think is also directed by the guy who directed this, Kevin, however you say his last name, but Tiny, tiny, teeny, whatever the fuck. <laughs> teeny, tiny. Um, and that is the only real connection uh, to anything else. And it's Witch Trap, which is not part of the Witchboard franchise, but it's the exact same villain played by the exact same actor, directed by the same guy, I think. Um, so that's interesting. But then the sequels have nothing to do with this. So a total, like it's a spinoff, I guess. But it's not really a part of this franchise. It's, it's interesting. Um, we get a cameraman's shadow on the wall uh, in this. Little technical flubs here and there are always fun to find, but doesn't hurt the film at all. Um, and the I find it very odd that Linda is scared when the planchette moves on its own. Like, you've been playing with this thing for a while. Like, you've been communicating with David for a while. And you didn't, ex like, you're scared that the thing's moving on its own? Why? What? Like, it's moving with your hands on it, so why is it so much different when it moves on its own? She's, like, freaked out when it moves, starts moving on its own. I, I did not understand that at all. Um, and, as I said, the detective keeps making these weird connections. Like, he's talking about magicians and hiding things and that he's good at this and that. It's the way he's doing it. He's very awkward and very bizarre. Um, we get a reference to, they go up to Big Bear, California. I used to live right out there, so it was cool to, to hear it. Uh, I lived in Lake Arrowhead right next to it. I love how people always look through microfilm so fast in movies. They're always just down in the basements of these libraries and they're just scanning through it and just like bam they always fall right on the article do you have any idea how fucking long you'd have to sit down there and look at microfilm to find the exact thing you're looking for forever and ever and ever um 
And we get the line, I got a bad feeling about this, another nod to Star Wars here. So I want to say that both of those lines, the I know after the I love you and the got a bad feeling about this, have to be in reference or homages to Star Wars. Um, and there is a great exchange here between Brandon and Jim uh, trying to figure out where they went wrong. And um, he... He asks him like why why Linda wanted him over over Brandon and and to which he replies like I made her like I make her laugh man and Brandon says well I made her laugh too and Jim says yeah but only in the bedroom that line is so fucking funny and it's such a great tension breaker and it's so naturally you know this feels like friends giving each other shit. Like, dudes give each other shit. I have a client who comes in, he's a guy, and we're always shitting on each other. And my brother and I, my dad doesn't even like how me and my brother and I are to each other. Like, he can't even be around us. Like, if I'm on the phone with my brother, we say the most horrible things, literally the most horrible things that can possibly come to our mind. And the truer, the funnier. Like any of your insecurities, anything that we know from each other's past, any of that stuff, you know, if someone cheated on you or if, or if you were adopted or if, you know, whatever, it's coming up and it is getting attacked. And I've always found it to be great medicine, like to stop taking things so seriously and, and to have some fun with, with the terribleness in life. And my brother and I are able to do that to each other. My client and I and other guys that I know. It's just you attack these things about each other. You know? Um, and this felt so genuine. About two friends who had kind of sh like lost their way. Fought over a woman. And then they have this moment where they're like apologizing to each other essentially and then they go for that attack of like I fuck your girlfriend better than you do and she's laughing at you in the bedroom it's funny and it, it feels genuine and I really like it and that's when Brandon and Jim both became characters that I really wanted because at that point I was very unsure of both of them I, I was kind of like yeah, well, they're both being dicks and one of them's super snobby but and then the other one is is very entitled and you know, it's just, I don't know. But then in that exchange, it really won me over as real, genuine humans. You know, just, just regular old dudes. And when Brandon's killed shortly after, I was bummed. I was like, oh no, that sucks. Um, and let's see. Uh, Melf, Melfator? Melfator. Melfator. Yeah, Melfator is the uh, villain in this. And he lived in, in the house in which uh, Linda, Linda and, and uh, Jim live in, which I actually thought was a house in the beginning, but it's like an, a, it's like a condo. I, I, I didn't realize like I, in the opening, it seems like her house, but then there's like multiple people living in that building. Cause I was like, their house is fucking enormous. And there's like a living room and everything where people are hanging out. And I was like, oh, so this is just one big house. No, I guess not. I guess it's multiple residents live in there. So I was super confused for a minute because it really does feel like just her home, but um, it is not. Um, and I don't want, yeah, he doesn't want Linda. He wants Jim because he's the portal. And um, he's told basically like he figures out like, Oh, I got to kill myself to save Linda. And he's kind of like, nah, just shoot the board. And that's really kind of the thing that is goes throughout this series. You got to destroy the board. You got to destroy the connection. So he just shoots the board and it like flies around the room and he's shooting it and it blows up. And that's really silly and kind of dumb. Uh, I don't really care, but then it switches over and you think that maybe Linda died or maybe, um, like, uh, Jim died. And so it looks like a funeral. It's a bunch of people in a, in a church. And you're like, oh, shit, which one of them died? And it's Linda and Jim's wedding. And I was like, that was a really cool fake out. That was really clever on their part to make it look like it's going to be a funeral. And they pan over and it's them getting married and they're both alive. That was super cool. I liked that a lot. 
Um, and then we get the guys who um, find a board and they ask it like, does this thing still work? And the planchette, which is the writing planchette that they find, uh, or not the writing planchette, but whatever. It's like, does this still work? And yeah, it's the writing planchette. Yeah. And it just, it moves so fast and writes the word yes. It made me laugh because it's just there. And then it just goes, and it's like, yes. <laughs> it didn't even try to do that. It just went across and somehow it already read out the word yes. Wrote out the word yes. I thought that was super funny. Um, but really like the characters here. I think this is a cool movie that definitely doesn't get enough praise. And as a franchise, I think this is a cool one so far. So uh, I'll cover the witch board later, but I got to get back to my job. I got a client in five minutes. So got it right under the wire. What do you guys think about this one? Have you seen this one? Have you seen the sequels? Uh, would you want a, um, you know, another one? I sure as hell would. Uh, there's, there's definitely a a few Ouija board movies out there. Um, obviously, the Mike Flanagan Ouija Origin of Evil, uh, which I think they actually refer to it as Ouija in that, but maybe not. I don't remember. But this one's definitely Ouija. <laughs> but the movie's called Witchboard. Uh, you would think it would just be called Ouija, but maybe they had a... a I don't know. I, I can't imagine a trademark issue with the company because it looks like they use her, their board. So I don't know why it's not called Ouija, but uh, Witchboard. It's cool. Check it out if you haven't seen it. It's on Shutter. Adios.